back in the early 1960s, the ruler of Dubai decided to go ahead with building an international airport, despite opposition from foreign advisors who thought he was over-ambitious. It's that kind of forward thinking that has made Dubai an international trade hub. And Zahira Bariawa is waiting to show us around the city of the future. Flowing from the empty quarter of the Great Arabian Desert and forming part of the ancestral home of the Oryx, the dunes of Dubai's interior roll across the emirate to the coast, where a skyline appears that couldn't be mistaken for any other place on earth. Soaring skywards from the waters of the Persian Gulf, this is the most popular city in the UAE. Marhaba, hello and welcome, I'm Zahira. A greeting is one of the first things you learn when you move to a new city. For me, when I moved to the United Arab Emirates, I discovered how warm, friendly and proud of their heritage the people of the UAE were. I also discovered that I was in a city where anything was possible. Take a trip with me around the city today and you'll see why. While much of today's city is only a few decades old, it completely dwarfs old Dubai, which dates back to the early 18th century. Like its older counterpart centered around the creek, New Dubai has so much to offer that it's impossible to do this city justice in just one day. I've planned a very special itinerary that focuses on a panoramic view of the city with special stops at key attractions. With over a million vehicles on Dubai's roads and with the city's population projected to exceed 3.5 million by 2020, improved public transport is a government priority. The Mammoth Motorway, that is Sheikh Zayed Road, is named after one of the former leaders and presidents of the UAE. It is a 550 kilometer road that stretches all the way from Abu Dhabi to the Emirate of Ras Al Khaimah. On any given day, this five lane motorway is packed with commuters traveling to and from their destination and feels like it's the lifeblood of the city. The global recession of 2008 had a major impact on Dubai's real estate market, but many projects are back in progress. One of my favorite precincts in the city is downtown Dubai, with its famous fountains, large towers, the Burj Khalifa, and the world's largest shopping mall. What I'm most excited about is the 2,000-seater Dubai Opera, due to open later this year. Located in what's built to be the most prestigious square kilometer in the world, the Dubai Opera promises to bring life to music and arts like never before. For centuries, the creek was the heart of Dubai. And while it's no longer essential to the economy, it does add to the city's lifestyle appeal, while also offering an unusual travel opportunity. The best vantage point for some of the city's more spectacular sites isn't always on the ground. The super skyscrapers and magnificent man-made islands are often best viewed from the air. I've decided to take a unique experience and view the city from the clouds. We're not taking off, off a runway, but from the sea. Good morning, how are Welcome you? To Thank very well. you very much. Today you'll be boarding the Cessna Caravan 208. You'll be having a 40 minutes flight. You'll be seeing all the landmarks, uh, the iconic landmarks of Dubai. You'll be flying 1,500 feet approximately. Anything I need to remember? Just remember that once you're seated, just buckle up from, the, from taking off and then landing and enjoy your flight. Thank you. It's something new, let's give it a go. First, it felt more like being aboard a powerboat than an aircraft, but not long after skimming over the surface of the creek, there was air beneath the floats. Zahira was treated to a view of the city that she'd never experienced before, flying over the characteristic shapes of Dubai's man-made islands and around some of the tallest towers of the world. different experience. Being in a smaller plane, it feels like your tummy's jumping up and down the whole way and landing on water was really different. A lot harder than I'd expected, but really fun. 
The next stop was more down to earth and yet still remarkable. I've mentioned that this is a city of superlatives and the Dubai Mall ticks all the boxes. Although China boasts malls with greater leasing area, this one covers 1 million square meters, which makes it the largest in the world. With over 1,200 stores under one roof, it offers retail therapy on a mind-boggling scale. You may not be surprised to find almost all the brands you'd expect to see in London, Milan or New York. But there's a stretch of glass frontage that will astound you. A fish tank adds ambiance to any home. But how about one that stands four stories tall? This 10 million litre aquarium boasts over 33,000 aquatic specimens, including the world's largest collection of sand tiger sharks. If you've ever wondered what it would be like to live in a city beneath the sea, the acrylic tunnel gives you a preview of the future. After rising from the watery depths, a short trip at street level brought Zahira to her next otherworldly destination with a friendly polar bear at the door. If you're after one of the more surreal experiences, why not try out skiing in the middle of the desert? With over 6,000 tons of snow, Ski Dubai, located at Mall of the Emirates, has something for everyone. If you're an avid skier, try your hand at the 400 long meter run or simply throw snowballs and play with the penguins. Fortunately, visitors aren't expected to bring their own ski gear. Hi. Hi. Ski Dubai. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. The facility can offer you everything you need, except a sense of balance. On the other hand, instructors are available for absolute beginners and anyone wanting to brush up their skills. Let's hit the slopes. Covering over 22,000 square meters, this indoor resort maintains a temperature cold enough to keep the snow firm and crisp. So it's been a very long time since I've been on the slopes, but I'm looking forward to trying it out. An 85-meter-high artificial mountain creates the slopes, with five routes ranging from nursery level for beginners to the world's only black diamond run for die-hard skiers. Pretty cool, no pun intended, but I'm going to go ahead numb from head to toe, so I'm going to get out of here. Zahira soon thawed out in the desert heat as she made her way through a forest of skyscrapers to the tallest of them all. It's easy to forget that the Burj Khalifa is made of concrete and steel because it appears to float above the city. It stands just short of 830 meters tall, making it the tallest man-made structure in the world. It's named after the president of the UAE, His Excellency Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The design is interesting because it used bundles of tube in the shape of spiral minarets of Islamic architecture. And if you were wondering, the world's highest post office sits on the 148th floor. Climb to the top begins with an old-school escalator ride. Followed by an elevated trip rising at 10 meters per second to the world's highest observation deck on the 148th floor. Here, visitors can enjoy the panoramic views from a vantage point more than half a kilometer above the ground. When seen from this height, the city's inhabitants seem to be swallowed by the surroundings, with only the traffic offering evidence of life on the streets. It's only when you get back to ground level that a more human-scaled perspective returns. If there's one structure that epitomizes the city's can-do approach, it's the Burj Al Arab. An island was built to support the hotel, and the construction of the island took longer than the hotel itself. Burj Al Arab means Tower of the Arabs and was built with the inspiration of the sale of a Dow. Now taking a photo of this iconic building might be priceless, but spending a night in the Royal Suite will set you back 19,000 US dollars. Topping out at 321 meters, the hotel has a helipad 210 meters above the ground, with one of its three restaurants just 10 meters lower. 
Despite its height, the property houses only 202 bedroom suites. Dubai is one of the fastest growing cities in the world. It boasts the world's tallest hotel, tallest building and largest mall. This kind of development is impossible with great vision and forward thinking. And these projects have been made possible by pioneering technology. It's a city that's home to a variety of people willing to take large commercial risks and is also not short of venture capitalists. Dubai is a city of the future where anything is possible. Looking at the city's skyscrapers, malls and road network, it's easy to understand why Dubai residents are among the world's greatest consumers of electricity and water. At present, almost all of the electricity is supplied by gas turbine plants. But there's a big move towards nuclear, solar and other renewables. Practically all drinking water is produced by desalination plants and wastewater is recycled, just as if it were a domed city on a faraway planet. I've chosen eye candy to round off our tour because it's one of my favorite spots in the city. Thank you for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed being shown around this amazing city I call home. I'm sure you can see now what I consider it to be a city of the future where everything is possible. I'm Zahira, it's goodbye for now until we meet again in Dubai.